Okay, uh, I am Ratna Hirani. I'm a structural engineer by profession. And I have been in this uh, profession for last 47 years. I'm 71 now. And uh, all these 47 years, I have been in practice of structural engineering and uh, done a number of uh, architectural uh, products and uh, mainly buildings and some engineer, engineering like bridges and others. And yes, I think I'm still going strong. <laughs> I think, yeah. yeah. Okay, I think uh, I joined AAK sometime 1979 or so. Yeah, 1979. And I became a fellow about 15 years ago. So I've been a fellow for the last 15 years. Yeah. I think in all these years, I started my practice in 1973 and now coming all the way. I've seen a number of changes uh, in, the, in, in the profession of architecture and structural engineering. And uh, of course, the most evident one is uh, the practice, uh, you know, digital uh, technology coming in. So for last uh, 20 years, I think uh, it's taken over. I mean, in my time when I started, we used to do all the drawings using T-square in a board. And uh, we've done many drawings and designs using this. But slowly, of course, now, of course, I can't say I'm digital, but uh, my colleagues, the younger colleagues are very much digital. I am not that digital, but uh, just trying to cope and moving forward. And I think uh, in those earlier years, I think uh, mainly, you know, when we used to work with architects as a structural engineer, I think architects were down to earth in the sense that, you know, actually they were really working on drawing board and, you know, we used to discuss each finer details of a, a architectural product building. and. These days, I find it's not the same, which is actually a sorry state, as I, I can put it that way, because people don't pay so much attention to details. And I'm talking about architects and engineers both. And uh, that is why you find some of these buildings, because they are digitalized, and they just pick up designs from somewhere, and they use these designs, and you get some product which, you know, it, doesn't, it hasn't really come from heart of an architect or an engineer. So basically, you see, I, in my years, all these years, I think, you know, a good structural engineer should have a knowledge of architecture and a good architecture architect should have knowledge of structural engineering to give you a very good product, architectural product at the end which these days uh, I'm finding it's not there. I think, uh, again, as I said, uh, upcoming architects and uh, engineers, if they were to work together and come up with good products, I think they still need to understand each other's discipline, as I said earlier. And uh, by understanding each other's discipline, you know, you can create a very good architectural and engineering product out of it. And these days I'm seeing that's not happening. And uh, that is why some of these buildings coming up, maybe they look good, yes, uh, but uh, they may not be as functional or you know, even aesthetically, you may say they are okay, but not that functional in terms of, and you know, people don't put in enough effort into their work, you know, this heart and effort, which is missing these days, I think, in most, uh, architectural products yeah i yes i am worried about the future if architects and structural engineers don't change this attitude i think you are going to end up with products which are just coming out you know machine products you know that's my worry and i think we as seniors in the profession we should be guiding and you know mentoring younger architects and engineers to, 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 to try and think, you know, with their heart and mind, put the mind and heart in their work.
I think uh, again, the upcoming architects and engineers should think from basics and fundamentals, you know, more than picking up from, you know, ready-made programs and all that. That will give some very good architectural uh, products. And uh, I think it is very important. Yes, technology is good and we should use it, but don't let it be your master. You be the master of technology. You know, don't let technology govern you. I think you should use it correctly and in its right place. You see, my trouble is again, you see, when I ask my younger engineers, I, if I ask them, well, how did you get this answer? They would say, I don't know. I said, then how did you get this answer? So my computer gave me. Now this is where I get worried. This is where I get worried, you see. That yes, computer can give you something, but if you yourself don't know how you come, suppose I had to vary a little bit, you know, the loading or the spans or whatever, they have no answer, you know. Whereas I can say, yes, it cannot be this. It has to be somewhere around there. But for them, it's so difficult. They just because they, 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 they haven't used fundamentals of engineering. So that's what is worrying for the profession. Yeah. Uh, it is both positive and negative. Positive in the sense, yes, uh, you save time uh, to get the final answer. But negative in the sense, you know, that creativity is lost, you know, you are left it to the computer. So anything you want to change or, you know, uh, vary a design, you know, you know, because it's not you who is doing it, it's the computer doing it, that's where you lose it. So I think it is still important, even as we go with the technology, it is still important that you do your own thinking, you know, an engineer or an architect thinks on his own and not let the computer, you know, or technology lose, you know, it should not govern you, you should govern the 